How do I know if my tank is full? Leads very on to how we were discussing about the, the sludging. <laughs> it does. But let's, let's jump back, back in time. Okay. So, how do I, where do we go about this? Again, have a chat with the, with the manufacturer. Um, find out what levels of sludge volume they allow for in their tanks. This will vary depending on the equipment that they have inside the tank. So whether this be our air lifters or it could be rotational discs or if they've got suspended aeration filters, very much um, you'll need to have a set sludge volume within that tank. So it could be 100 centimetres off the bottom of the tank. It could be 150. Mm -hmm. And really speaking, that will be our percentage volume in terms of the sludge level. Now, how do you determine what that sludge level is in relation to respective of how much sludge you've got in your tank? If we're talking about septic tanks, um, you will refer back to what we said earlier um, with the sludging. Um, we generally have natural um, gravity, gravity settlement within the septic tank. So we'll have a liquid layer on the top and the sludge layer below that. So the best way to determine how much sludge we've got in our tank is to basically just drop a stick in there, lift it up, and then measure where that, um, that marking on that stick is in terms of the sludge level. And that will be potentially, if we say we had 100 centimetres as our maximum volume and we had 70, we can then, of course, say our tank is 70% mm -hmm. full based on the recommend, rec on the manufacturer's guidelines um, for the maximum level. Um, so that's what we'd do really in relation to a septic tank. If you're talking about um, wastewater treatment plants, um, you would normally do something called a sludge volume 30 test, which is usually deviated as an SV30 test, where you um, take um, a sample of aerate, of um, sludge as it's being aerated um, from um, the treatment plant, and you would um, put that into a 1,000 um, litre measuring cylinder. You would then allow that to settle for 30 minutes, hence SV30. And of course, over the 30 minutes, you'll get um, the waste testing at the bottom and you'll get your liquid um, yeah. water layer on the top. Of course, um, if you were, depending on where that volume is, whether it's 300 millimeters or 400 millimeters that again is your percentage volume of sludge versus your liquid layer in the tank so if you've got a um, a system which is working 24 7 um this is um very much the test you would do with a graph system there are, of course are opportunities where you could do this during sedimentation if you wanted to but it's still i think advantageous to stir the sludge up get that aerated sludge do a prop, the SV30 test properly to gauge how much sludge volume you have in your tank. Again, once you've worked out how much sludge you've got in your tank, you can then um, really forecast, of course, when you potentially need to get your um, tank emptied. The SV30 test is something that um, someone um, should be doing if you're getting an, an engineering company in to service your tank. As it's a bit more hands-on, you have to take um, yeah. a sample out with um, um, a jug and then pour it in and at the time at 30 seconds. Well, by all means, if the homeowner wants to get their hands dirty, I ain't going to stop them, um, but because um, it's a good, again, to have appreciation of how the system works. But again, it's probably recommended that you get um, a servicing company to carry out this particular test for you. As I say, it's if you were doing a, a service of a system, it's something that you would do at the beginning of the service, of course, because it's going to take 30 minutes for the waste to settle, hence the SV30 yeah. test. So if you do this first, that can be settling whilst you're doing your other, all your other check, checks. Of course, you don't want to do your SV30 test at your end of your test because you just sat there um, twiddling your thumbs. So just something to bear in mind, if you are going to do an SV30 test and you are a maintenance contractor, get this sample out of the tank, set it to one side, and then you can do all your other checks in terms of the working components within the system. And of course, you can then refer back to this at the end. And of course, you can then do your report and then leave the site. So that would be my recommendation on, um, yeah, what's, Sludge volume do I have in my tank? Perfect.